Alongside Rory Boylan, I'm Nick Alberga for another edition of Sportsnet's NHL Power Rankings. First and foremost, Rory, the Vancouver Canucks didn't make your list this week. What what gives? <laughs> Maybe next week, Nick. He, they got to go on a heater here. Maybe they'll get there one day. We Wish love we'll reading thinking, right? the comments here. The Vancouver Canucks are the best <laughs> team in the National Hockey League. Rory, we start at number 10. I think you're bang on the Winnipeg Jets. Yeah, Winnipeg. Um, you know, I don't even know if we've got the full view of this team yet because it's it's has taken Pierre Luc Dubois a while to settle in, and I think he's starting to get there. And I think that they're going to add a defenseman from somewhere at the deadline, and that's going to take some time to settle in. So I think the best is yet to come from the Winnipeg Jets. Already, they're a team that can play you kind of fast, play a heavy, whichever, maybe heavier if there's some muscle added to that back end and of course Cal Connor Hallibuck is what holds it all together so they're just a really strong team I don't think there's any big surprise here they could be higher if they had won that series against Edmonton a week ago but a good strong showing against the Vancouver Canucks getting wins and points that they should be getting and now they're pushing maybe for the first overall spot in the North Division. You talk about number nine a team to this point has been off all week because of the COVID situation in Montreal they're back in action on Saturday night in Toronto it's the Edmonton Oilers. I mean this is going to be a big measuring stick series for them again uh, they, they didn't fare too well against the Toronto Maple Leafs the last time they played them at the start of this month but you know seven and two since then uh, top of the division is on the line here in this series Mike Smith is a huge story in Edmonton uh, 920 save percentage, 235 uh, goals against average since that series against Toronto at the start of the month. Miko Koskinen in that time too has been 938, 168. So th the thing for me is, is that no one believes that's going to continue at that level for both of these goalies the rest of the way. So they need to take advantage of these guys when they are on their heaters. They're rested coming into Toronto. Just a huge weekend for the Oilers to establish themselves, maybe move up this list next week or fall off of it again. Nice tease. Uh, talk about tease. Tyson Berry for Norris. We'll leave it at that. Number eight, the Pittsburgh Penguins, Rory. I'm kidding, by the way. Yeah, uh, I hope you are. Uh, <laughs> uh, the Pittsburgh Penguins, I mean, I don't feel great about having a team like this in the top ten because I personally just don't believe in them all that much. But again, since Brian Burke and Ron Hextall got there, it's not their doing directly, but they have been on fire. And the last ten games, they've been one of the best teams in the league as well that the problem is that for, for me personally if i'm going to pick a playoff series i have a hard time seeing myself picking pittsburgh over boston the islanders or washington but you have to give them credit for the heater that they are on and this is just they this isn't a great example of how hard it is to put together a list like this in a season like this because you're only playing in division half of all these divisions for the most part are fairly soft touches so when you look at a team like pittsburgh yeah they're deserving of top 10 spot right now but who have they been getting these wins against lately buffalo new jersey buffalo again the new york <laughs> rangers they had a split in a series with the boston bruins which was really the one that you could get any sort of measure on them for and, and you get a win and a loss in there and boston's not on this top 10 so you know it, it's just they're getting the wins that they need to so they should be here but i don't know if i really think pittsburgh is a top 10 team or will be by the time the playoffs get here maybe they are because they do have that star power and they always have those guys that they find put in the lineup and they'll get goals from them so you can't underestimate that but there's still a lot of holes in this team i think yeah i'm with you on that front i do like your point about uh, you know playing within the division uh, you know compare them to say a team like edmonton there is a you know realism that edmonton can get out of at least the first round where pittsburgh it's the, i think it's going to be a bit more tougher yeah uh, speaking of which uh, a team that has surprised many but all they do is make the playoffs as we know over the last 20 years the uh, minnesota wild yeah, minnesota um yeah the question is can they win a playoff series or two playoff series you know do something in the playoffs they get there but they never really win you know it was really impressive to me a couple weeks ago when they got two wins against the vegas golden Knights. i know they had dropped two against them on the road the week before but to come back against a team like that who i think many think is a good step ahead of the wild and win two against vegas was really a bit of a message uh, they did get hammered by the Colorado Avalanche later on. We'll get to them in a bit. But Minnesota, I mean, everything is changing there. We've talked about it. They, the young core that is coming on, led by Kar Kirill Kaprizov, um, they've got a good, pretty uh, de defense core there uh, as well. Again, 
is this team one that you look at and say, yeah, they could come out of this division and be a top four team, a semifinalist? I have a hard time getting there, but we just have to get used to this idea of thinking about the Minnesota Wild differently because they are so so much changed from what we've seen before. So maybe th what we're seeing from the regular season will carry over to the playoffs. They can get some momentum and win a playoff series. They were a huge disappointment in the bubble last year, right? You, you thought maybe some momentum would, would carry them. Kevin Fiala's hot finish was, was a huge talking point and they couldn't do it. Now they've got more towards that excitement and, and the youth that is coming in. So maybe this is the year. They're giving us a lot of, a lot of stuff to point at and say, you know, a lot of reason to believe, but still a tough division at the top there. It's funny, they add one player and their sex appeal goes through the roof. Uh, so they're at number yeah. seven. I jumped the gun just a tad, which leads us to number six, a team I think both you and I agree with and believe in at that. It's the Carolina Hurricanes. Yeah, and I would feel really comfortable uh, even having them higher uh, than they're currently ranked. But you just, you know, we'll get to the teams that are above them that I think right now are just playing better. But the, the, the reason why I didn't put Carolina higher, I kind of getting back to that Pittsburgh point lately, they have been getting wins against the soft touches. They've been winning, getting wins against Columbus and, and Detroit uh, in that division, which is not a knock. You need to be getting those wins. But the last time that they had a quality win against an opponent, I think you have to, you have to look back a little bit. And so when you're, you're kind of weighing these things, some of these teams ahead of them are on uh, stronger heaters or have played some of the top teams and beat them more recently but that's not at all a knock on on the Carolina Hurricanes I think there's a top solid pretty pretty solid top tier of teams that Carolina should be in especially with the way Alex Nedeljkovic is going yeah. goaltending was my main concern with this team it was not offense it was not defense and now that they're getting the goaltending they have to be considered a cup contender I have no clue what they're going to do is Peter Morazic is on the men to return. They have James Rammer. Maybe they put all three in for a period and call it a day. Uh, <laughs> number five, we're at the halfway point, the Vegas Golden Knights, Roy. Vegas. I, I just wrote the power rankings uh, for .ca yesterday, and Vegas was number two. And they've fallen down here because of how outmatched they got by Colorado there on Thursday. I mean, unbelievable, right? Again, Vegas is one of these teams that is in the top tier here. I really want to see a playoff series between them and Colorado. That would be absolutely fantastic. Hopefully we get there, but they have everything. And when you're trying to come up with what are they going to do with the trade deadline? I don't know what they need. Honestly, they have everything. They have all the depth. They have no cap space anyways, um, but they've got to be a team that's up here. We've, talked about them so much I mean there is not a weakness here it is just that loss to Colorado and how one-sided it was they had to take a tumble versus some of the other teams that are playing really well ahead of them number four yes 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 it's the <laughs> New York Islanders Rory how do you feel about them well I mean I feel like we've been That's giving them the, I, I feel like well I struggle with it because you hear all the time they deserve respect they deserve respect I feel like we've given them pretty good respect on this show all year right like they've been ranked fairly high I don't know how much higher we can go with this could you put them into number three I don't think so because Washington has been playing really well lately as well and the New York Islanders just lost to them recently. They lost to them a couple of times in January. So they have not picked up a single point against the Washington Capitals yet uh, this season. So that is going to be something in the back of their minds as we go here. But I think what's interesting is that you lose your top goal scorer in Anders Lee and you still go 5-2. and two. And I know some of those games have been tough, uh, close ones, especially with the New Jersey Devils. And they have been shooting at a really high shooting percentage in that time. So you're getting, you're getting through this. But at some point, to combat that eventual trickle down, that, that eventual fall to some degree of the shooting percentage, you need to acquire that goal score. I think everybody's expecting them to, I don't know what they're going to move. I don't know if it's going to be anything off the roster because Lou Lemerel and this team is all about chemistry. You wouldn't want to upset anything like that. But I think it is very apparent that they need a goal score to push this thing forward. Also, you want to talk about dark horse, dark horses in the Calder conversation. All, Oliver Wallstrom, what he's doing, he scores a goal at least every game. It's pretty insane for the Islanders who always need that offense. Number three, the Washington Capitals. Yeah, Washington. I mean, they are they are just on fire, right? Like they had to deal with their COVID stoppage. They had to deal with a number of their top players out of the lineup for a while, so it was hard to get a read on this team. But like, this is not a surprise, right? They are solidly a cup contender. Uh, this year uh, again this is a team that maybe could nibble around the edges to add around the trade deadline Stanley Cup 
winners tend not to do a lot of stuff at the deadline. It's really blue line depth and things like that. So maybe the Capitals look for some depth somewhere in their lineup, but we, they are what we thought they were. They are winning. I like that line. They are winning a ton of games. They're winning against the top teams in their division. As I said, the top team that is pushing them in that division, the New York Islanders, they are 3-0 and against. So they, they absolutely deserve to be number three overall. The numbers speak for themselves. Producer Drew is going to love number two. It's the yeah. Colorado Avalanche, Roy. He might actually be mad I didn't put them number one, to be honest. <laughs> uh, I mean, that 5-1 thumping of Vegas was incredible. They shot them 32-19. Yeah, I mean, the, Colorado has been out shooting opponents to a wild degree for a, a, a long time now, but to see them do it against the Vegas Golden Knights was just absolutely incredible. The Avs have generated 60% of the five on five shots in their games over the last two months and the next best team in the entire league in that stretch is 55 percent like it's absolute and utter dominance from this team so they are my favorite in the uh what we would call the western conference uh, but i would call you it? know yeah I, in that division they're my favorite out of all the western teams think back to the old west to cover they are they're the favorite i don't know how the semifinals is going to shake out we don't know how that's going to look obviously this year but they are they are solidly a cup contender they went through a bit of a stretch there was like eh, what's going on with this team but uh, i mean pedal the metal again and, and they're right back at the top and please how about some love for philip grubauer for vesna conversation yes. everybody's talking elsewhere i'm loving grubauer this season weirdly enough in a contract season what does he get in free agency <laughs> which brings us Rory to number one I think far and away I think we'd both agree that this is the best team in hockey as we speak right now the Tampa Bay Lightning Tampa Bay has just I mean we talked about Vegas having everything Tampa Bay has everything and I think everything is better than Vegas all along the way except maybe the backup goalie right yeah. um but, but Tampa Bay, I mean, defending Stanley Cup champions, just bumping yeah, absolutely everybody, miles ahead of the competition in the division, around the league. Uh, they have no cap space. I don't know what they're going to do. Their depth Nothing. players, yeah. they don't need to do anything. Um, they're, they're depth, I mean, you're talking about Philip Grubauer for the Vesna. I worry that Andre Vasilevsky is going to get overlooked because his team's so so yeah. damn good. You know, like, yeah. this is, this is, you, you you can't knock him. You can't knock John Cooper and his bid for a Jack Adams just because the team is good. The, the team is, you know, like they, these are top players in the league. Victor Hedman for the Norris Trophy. Again, exactly. Um, so, you know, you can point to every position on this team and they have a top three player or better in the league at that spot. And so uh, Tampa Bay is ahead of Colorado on this list. And I, I hesitate to say by how much, but I don't think it's, I don't think it's, close at the moment you know i have to hesitate you know i i I, not, I don't mean to say that i think tampa bay would roll over colorado for nothing in a playoff series but i don't know if there's a good case to be made for colorado to be over them right now i don't even know one point that you can make and the best thing of all no nikita kucherov who's expected back for the stanley cup playoffs for power rangers fans out there it's they're like a factory of putty making right now like they just <laughs> alex volkov former second round pick go to anaheim we don't need you and the next man up it's ross colton like it's insane the way they develop prospects there yeah and and look at one of the guys that they they lost this year goes to florida uh and absolutely dominate i i think last year or last week i talked about matthew joseph he's my, my personal favorite uh, of a guy who if if he ever found a, a, a place, a, a way to a new team and was a top six player somewhere else, like he could be a pretty decent goal scorer and contributor for, for somebody kind of like what Verhage is doing with the Panthers there. Um, and so that's what it, it is. They always have these guys that can come up. I mean, Mitchell Stevens is going to be here before long too. Like they, there's yeah. guys, they have guys and they, they're highly respected prospects that are coming up that they can just find and develop extremely well. So not only are they the number one team right now they've got to be the best organization period in the nhl to my favorite part of the show as you wrap up what did you miss in the top 10 uh i'm not as much of a stickler this week as i was last week but you got to find a way to get toronto in there uh, i know they struggled as of late they're not they're not hitting on all cylinders right now but to have edmonton ahead of toronto I don't know how I feel about that, right? Yeah. So, I mean, honestly, that was tough. Um, the, the thing I'll is, tough, yeah. Well, I have a list of the first <laughs> out, the first out, and it's Toronto and Boston. Okay. Um, you know, like I, I get it, right? But it's Toronto yeah. has been been off for a bit. Again, not a lot of big wins. And I think at this top ten, what I'm trying to do is, in, especially in this season, 
you want to kind of spread it out over the divisions. Every division is represented by at least two teams here. Um, and I don't really feel like the North Division is one that needs three in it at this point. Um, but those three teams, Edmonton, Winnipeg, and Toronto, are so tight. They're going to be playing each other a couple of times here coming up and again in April, a little closer to the end of the season. And that's when it'll start to be separated a little bit. I think the fact that Toronto hasn't played much in the last two weeks, it's been hard to kind of keep them in the top 10 or, or at least move them up. And maybe next week we'll do a top 32 and we'll rank Seattle ahead of the Buffalo Sabres. Okay, Roy? <laughs> that was great. That was fantastic. Yeah. There you have it. That's Roy Boyle and I'm Nick Alberga. This is another edition of Sportsnet's NHL Power Rankings.